Well, hi, everybody. Hey, I just want to take a couple of minutes of your time here uh, just to uh, well, hopefully encourage you just a little bit. Um, I was uh, reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 16. And it's a story that we all know well. It's uh, where Jesus was asking his disciples, who do the people say that I am? And then he turned the question to something a little more personal. He looked at them and said, now who do you say that I am? And that's when the Apostle Peter, he said, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. In response to Peter's confession, his confession of faith, Jesus said to him, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. When Jesus is building his church, when people are yielding to him and following his direction, nothing, absolutely nothing in heaven or in hell can stop the forward advance of his church. Now the routine activities <clears throat> of our church has been a little disrupted, yes, by this virus. We can't meet in a group any longer. But there's absolutely no need to hit the pause button on spirit-led ministry of the church. I'm still here. I'm still here for you. I'm still your pastor. Um, I encourage you, please, call me. Call me on the phone. Shoot me an email. Um, send me a text message. Get a hold of me on Facebook. However, whatever works for you. But I'm here for you. And I always will be. And I'm praying for you. And uh, I'll get back to you as quickly as I can, no matter how you contact me. Church is still alive and well, and we're doing good work. Now, I, I would like to uh, encourage you to do something. Because I think it's important that we just don't sit around wringing our hands, worrying about things. It's not going to improve anything. It's not going to change the situation. Brothers and sisters, there's a number of people who are having to stay at home during the uh, this advanced phase of the uh, pandemic. Advised to stay home and avoid potential exposure to the virus. And the elderly are especially vulnerable to this. They don't need to be out in public spaces if they don't have to be. Um, if people are exposed to the virus, they're on a quarantine. They're on a self-quarantine in their homes. Uh, lasting a couple of weeks. We have college students that are, or colleges and schools that are closing. And the students, uh, they've got to continue their studies at home. Now, those forced to stay at home might need assistance in picking up groceries or prescriptions or household items. Perhaps that's something you can do for them. If you need to go to the store, call someone you know who is in ill health. Make sure they don't need something. Take it to their home and drop it off on their front step by their front door. Don't go in the house. You just need to pick it up, drop it off, if you're so inclined to do so. But definitely, 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 we need to be proactive with one another and contact one another and encourage one another. Encourage them with an occasional phone call it's just to see how people are doing. Shoot them an email. Shoot them a... 
shoot them a text message, whatever. Offer to pray for them. We all could use a little prayer at this time, don't you think? Consider ways of ministering to those who are on the front lines of all this. Uh, the healthcare professionals, the uh, first responders, government leaders, they could all use your prayers. They could all use your words of encouragement. Why not express some appreciation for their efforts in writing, sending, sending them emails or cards? Let them know that you're praying for them. I think they could use a little encouragement themselves. I mean, this coronavirus pandemic, I'm not trying to play it down. It is dangerous. And it's a very disruptive force in our world today. But you know what? The Lord is not in a panic. He's not been taken by surprise. And quite frankly, people, he has a way for you and for me and for our church to not only survive this crisis, he also has a plan to use you as a minister of encouragement, a minister of truth in a deeply troubled period of our history. There's some hurting people out there. There's some scared people out there. They need to know that you love them and that Jesus loves them. Matthew 5.14 says, You are the light of the world. People, now is our time to shine. To shine as disciples. You and I alike. I also like to uh, <clears throat> ask you to invite people to our online service that we're holding every weekend. It's on YouTube. Just you can put in Eureka, Eureka Community Bible Church on YouTube, and it'll come up. I'm also putting in links to it. But if you know people who don't have a church or whose church isn't doing a service, let them know about it. Why not? The gospel is preached. Well, brothers and sisters, that's all I really wanted to say to you tonight. <clears throat> I just uh, pray for your safety, pray for your health, and pray that together, during this time of darkness, it, we will all act as that light in the world. God's blessings.